ba baller baller You're listening to Nearly Informed. What's up? My name is Brad at Brad Nolan on Instagram. Brian, hello. What's up, everybody? How you doing? I'm at Mood Points on Twitter. Let's pump the Twitter today. Mood Comedy everywhere else, but mainly go to Twitter. That's where you get all my fiery takes. <laughs> That's where he's more famous. No, and- I'm less famous on Twitter by a mile, but I think I'm uh, I'm more controversial. So there. Cool story. All right. We also have Pat Mood in the studio. What up? I said I wasn't going to ask how everyone's doing. How's everybody doing? Oh, we're great. We got a great show today. <laughs> it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we've got. We're going to talk about Brad with family back again, and uh, I believe how his uh, his his daughter being away for that long probably ruined her behavior. Uh, I'm guessing. Now nah, I may be paraphrasing, Brad. Yeah. No, you're not. You're not that far it's, off. It's close. Yeah. Uh, Patrick has another round of chemo on Tuesday. It's round number ten. Why do you sound so excited about it? Because I'm excited to get you to talk about it. <laughs> I why? Because um, I think it's going to be good. And we're getting to the end, man. That's cool. right. We're almost there. And then I saw an interesting article today about w- at what age do you talk to your kids about masturbation? And I think it's funny. As soon as um, they start masturbating. Uh, Whoa! My parents should have talked to me earlier about okay, it, because I was really confused about <laughs> how Did you guys not hear what we're going to talk about later? Oh, sorry, okay. That's All not right. how teases work. We'll get there. But you're ruining it. <laughs> you can't just start talking about the thing you're going to talk about later. they got to talk about that later. Here's the punchline, you guys. <laughs> Hold on! Just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> Let's start with the punchline. Stop roll it back. ruining the show. Um, I, I uh, had a. Have you ever had a moment of romance, or just, I don't know, just say sex, whatever, ruined by, by a dog? My dogs. I have actually. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's what they do, right? They're little little sea blockers. Mm-hmm. Well, I think also they're uh, horny. Well, they're I don't also think... little bee lickers. Well, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I don't think though that actually that that they see human sex and think that that's like, oh yeah, I want to get in on uh, some of that. I think they well, one, there's different pheromones and different smells. So they're probably like all sorts of weirded out. Oh yeah. Um, but just like they have no boundaries. Like Leo, this past weekend, Jessica and I. It's like psh, Friday night, we're getting into it. You know, things are going along swimmingly. <laughs> You're so bad at bringing up sex. It's so awkward. Why? Every Why time. Don't I, I mean, we're on a clean we're getting sh- into it. We're on a clean show here, Pat. I don't really. know. You got to dance sure. around it. You can't just. This isn't like. You can't just we're not dive just, right in. No, we're not a dive like bar right now. Like a penis into a vagina. Well, that's a good way to do it. And you called me awkward. Um, <laughs> that was smooth. Leo has no boundaries. It's f- just flat out jumps up on the bed and licks me in the calf. Now. That's the weirdest place ever. Like, the butt is uncomfortable. See, I, yeah, I was going to say, it's not the weirdest. No, 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 that's just flat out creepy, but, like, the, the calf is, like, a very, sen- it's a, it's far more sensitive than you think it is. And also, calf. you don't feel like something should be touching it. No, it's a weird spot. Yeah. Like, if, if it was in my butt, I'd be like, Jess, what are you doing? What <laughs> What's is going that? on is back that you? there? That's like, new. I can't say that I don't like it. <laughs> uh, let's see where this goes. Um, um, is that technically considered a threesome? When he licks my calf? Yeah. Or licks, uh, I think if it's above the knee, maybe. Yeah, sure. He got me on the calf, so I just think, I think above the oh, knee. I guess I have had a threesome. Yeah. But well, here's, the, here's the funny part, though, is that I made a noise like, whoa, Leo, like just yelling. Because he's not supposed to be doing that, and then he got all scared. Um, it, it reminded me like the face he made when he like jumped off the bed and was like cowering because he was scared of the like the yell. It reminded me of the movie Enough with J Lo, where like he throws her across the room and she makes like this, oh my god, like I'm what, being abused. What have you done to me? Right, this ter- and so he made this look, and then Jessica, this is what ruined it. She wanted me to make up with the dog. Like, she's like, oh, Leo, look at you hurt his feelings. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, what about yeah. him apologizing? Me too, too, Leo. Yeah, he just, just tried jumped to ruin up and this licked for my me. leg. Exactly. Just try to ruin this Very for me. vulnerable position. And uh, so I just was like, oh, are you kidding me right now? This is ridiculous. So then we had to, I had to go downstairs to give him like a treat. And then by that time, it's like, sex is over. Is this yeah. the first time this has happened to you with an animal? Nah, well, licking, yes. But he has always jumped up on the bed. Or we we dog sit for our friends Joe and Taylor, and they have this weird little dog named Diesel who will just sit on the pillow closest to whoever's head <laughs> is on the bottom. That's funny. Yeah, and just hover, yeah. and he doesn't do anything. He sits there like you know one of those fake owls in a in a uh, um, in a yard, scaring rats away. Yeah, scares yeah rats and rodents away. That's funny. Um, my Bosworth has a totally different reaction to me getting into it, and that's like he acts like he's the one that's that I'm like banging his girlfriend. Like he goes, he gets really upset. Like this isn't appropriate. He like stares at me and shakes, and then he goes into his dog cage and makes a racket. 
like literally just starts ripping the bed, oh bedding apart and like smashing around. It's the most awkward thing. He just like throws a tantrum. <laughs> That's how your You're dog having would sex react. With my though. girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, <sighs> I feel like he's so such a sensitive, sensitive little beast. He's just weird. He gets yeah. upset. He's just got this face that looks like he's just. Like, he, you can't tell, all he can tell is mood because when he gets in those little frisky, weird moods where he's running around the house, he's one of those dogs that gives no, he doesn't make any noises. He doesn't bark. No, he does it quiet. So he doesn't like, doesn't you don't see around. it coming. Tap, 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 you don't tap, tap, see it coming. Tap, 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 he makes this noise. <laughs> yeah, the, the weird grunt he does. <laughs> Brad, have you ever had sex ruined by something? Well, you have a daughter, I'm sure, doesn't. Well, uh, in yeah. a one-bedroom apartment, that's a whole doesn't just give you guys like, hey, what, a couple minutes here? Lick your calf. That's a whole different angle. <laughs> um, <laughs> pervert. <laughs> I think every time I've ever had an animal, they've ruined it consistently, and I think it, I think you're right. So animals are like, something's going on. There's what's different that? smells. What's going on? I just want to know what's going on. I wrestling, we're I... wrestling, everybody. Yeah, yeah. get in here. Uh, but yeah, no, having a kid, uh, it's never been ruined by her. I think we're just more careful than that. Sure. Um, but I could see how. I mean, yeah. We so my wife and I were having sex uh, at the in laws this over over the holidays, mm-hmm. and uh, everyone was out in the middle of the day. Everyone was out like kids were at school. So in this house, by the way, is not only my mo- my uh, mother and father in law, but also my sister in law and the, her three sons. It's like the house on Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, yeah. where all the grandparents Ugh. share a bed for some that reason. That house used to gross me out so bad when I was a kid. The grandparents sharing a bed and yeah, they're like long underwear. Feet. Yeah, and they just haven't gotten out of bed in five years and no one ever addresses like, the fact I, why they're bedridden old people. I feel like I could smell that part of the movie. Like so, I'd watch it and be like, ooh, <laughs> <it's funny. laughs> you. So this Stinky. house is more like the prelude to that, right? Because people are up and at them. Still, they haven't given yeah. up like the, the Black Plague or whatever that right. is... It, Keeping people from walking I around the hasn't struck in yet. that movie. He's just sitting there laying in a bed like he's bedridden, and then all of a sudden just gets up and goes to the chocolate well, factory. But no, at first he puts his feet on the ground and he's not sure he can even do it. Like right. walk, and he's, he's just all, that lazy. I, I don't know. They don't explain it. Yeah, it's the thing that they just kind of gloss Ill. over. He's, he's an He's ill. Um, so anyway, there's six people in the house normally, um, and then you add three more: me, my wife, and Declan. So things get a little bit crazy. So there was one day where. We were gonna have some some sexy time and uh, adult activity, yes. smooth. But she didn't want to do it on the couch, so we went to one of the nephew's rooms. Oh, nice! Do you have to move more. toys off the bed and stuff? Uh, he's older. Uh, he's like sixteen. Um, but the uh, the bed was broken, and so we were like, we started a thing and then realized the bed was falling apart. Oh, no. And we were like, okay, and then we just kind of stopped. It was just like, there was no getting was out it. of that awkward, you like... Just, you didn't try, like, a different... Well, diff- no, because then Declan came downstairs. Like, it was probably all for a good reason, but... So you guys have to have, like, Mission Impossible sex. Yeah, all the like, time. Like, you have to set diversions. Yeah, yeah it's got to be sneak attack. Like ninjas. Like, you got to repel from the ceiling when, yeah. and, you know, dodge trip wires and yeah. repel from set the ceiling off naked. constantly. <laughs> Get caught yeah. there. <laughs> it's, it's far more athletic. That's how I've been losing weight. Yeah, sure. What is just is just trying to have sex without anybody noticing? <laughs> yeah, in weird positions. <laughs> yeah, Nothing's going on over here. We're of, hiding in plain sight. <laughs> light of <laughs> notice. Uh, that's funny. All right, what's coming up next? Uh, coming up next, let's switch gears a little bit. Okay. Uh, coming up next, let's. You know what? Since we were talking about your family, I mean, it's maybe not the easiest segue, but they're back and they were gone for a while. They were gone for mm-hmm. a long while. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's coming up next here on Nearly Informed. This is Nearly Informed with Brad and. Brad. At Nearly Informed across all social media, although there's nothing there yet, so we'll work on doing that. We Look, we're trying to hire you gotta, people. You gotta, cool curate, you gotta curate stuff. We yeah. can't just like, you know, we're going to flood the socials, you know, at some point with a strategy. We're not just all willy-nilly posting whatever. And by the way, this is the... The uh, I wouldn't I was gonna say the reboot. This is the official launch day of Nearly Informed. The this official today? launch. Yeah, okay. we've been soft. We've we've been in the midst of a soft open. We've been nearly weekly, then nearly daily, and, and then, then we, we nearly then had we a, a name break. for a while. And then, but now now it's daily shows every day. Uh, I my dreams are we take phone calls eventually. Um, Very we possible. How to use that? We're in the new studio, and like most new studios. We don't know where everything is right yet. We don't. The technology's not quite 
We we don't know what needs to be replaced. All I know is that I feel the ambiance is better in here. We've got more chairs. Yeah, it's new to us. The Every, studio's new to us. It I doesn't mean, mean the it, stains it works. on the carpet are yeah. new to us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a stain. I was like, up. isn't this one nice? I was like, well, no, but I mean, <laughs> but it's I, not a dark cave works. like the other one. Yeah. Also, by the way, I'm fairly certain there is a chair in here that I have my feet on. It looks like a 1970s kind of lounger looking chair. I am pretty sure I stole this chair when we first started the Amp Radio Morning Show and had no chairs in the office. I'm fairly sure this is the chair this is I where stole. It landed. And I took it down and then when we got new chairs in the office to get rid of the chair, I just took it out in the hallway and left it. And, and so I think it just weird. migrated back. So this was all meant to be. Let's climbed up here. That we're back. I love that. That um, we're in the new you studio. You know what would be a fun game to play in this studio? Turn off the light and get a black light and see if we can solve the crimes that have happened. That. Oh my god! I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't know I'm what doing these it. Hey, maybe we can are, post that on social at some point. I'm bring, at nearly informed. Yeah, I'm bringing I, a black light. I don't know what it is about radio stations, but like for some reason, people feel like either they don't have to care if they spill things and say, like, just, eh, whatever, like, you know, spilling stuff everywhere. But they definitely don't ever feel the need to ever clean up anything after themselves. I I don't know. You know what I think it is, honestly, and maybe this is a little too logical and it's not funny. It's probably too logical, Brad. Yeah, and clearly not funny because it's coming from me, but... In radio, you're you're doing a lot of things in rapid succession. Maybe radio is not a business where you have time to clean it up. Oh, that's a bunch of garbage. Because you have to be on the air. Not in not in this little guy over here. Mm. No, you know what it is? It's a bunch of overnight slobs who come in here and they're and they're you know making their whatever their silly uh, air checks where they're you know introducing fake jazz songs. <laughs> I've been there. And Can- they knock over a coffee and they just try to rub it in with their foot like they're sixteen. Yeah. So frat house. have you ever heard the saying "a face for radio"? Yeah. You guys are disgusting people. So that's why these studios <laughs> yeah. are so gross. Remember when there sure was that. This- that thing of tapatio sauce or no. whatever in the other one. Don't remember. There was like some jar of like science project that was like sitting in the corner. And I think I brought it up to you, Brian, and you were like, yeah, I'm just going to see how long it stays there. Uh, well, that's the thing. The production studios are different than the on-air studios, but everything is, it, it's all messy and sloppy. But here's the funny part. You're around millions of dollars in technology. Millions. Like it's, it's not like these, these, uh, these boards that people, you know, these boards with all the volume knobs and the buttons and things, like, there's so much goes into all these things, yet, in terms of production and money, yet people come in here and just be like, yeah, I'm going to throw a slice of pizza right on the counter. I don't even need, maybe on a tiny napkin. Right. At least they're spilling on the floor, not on the... Yeah, but also radio's good <laughs> at saving money, so I'm assuming this is just reused carpet from a main studio at some point. Oh, God. They just, they just pulled it out of a main studio. <laughs> yeah, but but isn't, isn't that neat? At some point in time, this carpet could have been, those spills could have been caused by Adam Carolla. Yeah. Or Howard Stern. No. Way back in the day. Wasn't I'm telling you, let's get a black light here. He wasn't Do in some the building. DNA, oh. s- take some well, DNA Well, if it was a Howard Stern studio, there would be some DNA on the floor. Yeah, that's in true. Some creepy like things. All right, let's, uh, Wait, just to wrap that up, I do want to point out there's a sign by the door that says, if you use this studio, please quote, log off, end quote, and clean up after yourself, all in caps. Exclam- three exclamation yeah, points. Uh, no one's paying attention to that. Yeah. But sorry, Anthony, he signed it. Um, <laughs> all right, let's get into it. So, Brad, you have your family back. I actually, it's funny, I texted you today to say, hey, what do you want to talk about on the show today? We got, you know, let's let's find out where you've been up to since your kid, your your kid and your wife yeah, are what back. Was, what was my text back? Hold on, let me just... But I had it. already written that down. That's Brad's funny. got his family back. That's got to be interesting. Yeah. No, it is. It, okay, so here's the deal. Back in, like, November, right before Thanksgiving, so, like, November 17th or something like that, we went to Denver. Unfortunately, my wife's grandmother died, so she had to go from Denver to Seattle. And we don't have fly around the country all the time money. So the decision it's fun money, was, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, I know. I, I, the, someday. Frequent, the frequent flyer miles. I mean, you have, you have your pilot's license, yet flying is a problem. Well, that's expensive. Um, <laughs> and so... Uh, so the decision was made for her to stay in Seattle from that point until I would join them at Christmas. Now, when you do all the math, that means they're in they're in Seattle away from me from November. Or we're basically out away from the home from November all the way through last week. So what? That's two like, months? Yeah, like seven weeks. Yeah, seven, something like weeks. that. And so I've been kind of rocking solo life. With the exception of maybe, what, two and a half of those seven weeks? 
because mm-hmm. I went to Denver and then I went to Seattle to visit. But yeah, for... but she had to come down here and work, and she right. It it made more sense for your family to stay up in Seattle, and then you just totally bring them on back. And so I was really, you know, I was excited to have them come back. They came back on a Tuesday. Not so ideal, um, but they came back on a Tuesday, and I was super excited to have them back and everything. Still, am I love I love my family. I but love how long my did, that, did that that shine wear off? But I knew. But about I, an here's hour the thing. You're like, oh man. <laughs> here's the thing. I never even let the shine happen because I knew from the moment they landed, my life would go would would change again, right? Because I've been just working 24 hours a day and getting so much stuff done and all that stuff. And it's not to say that there are hindrance to that. It's just that I have a guilt. <laughs> it's I have just a, to suggest I mean, I'm not going to no, no, no. say that. I'm it's just going to insinuate it. I'm just saying it's on me. I have guilt around it if I work too much and because I have a young mm-hmm. daughter and a, and a wife. And yeah. so, so it's really on me that I put stuff aside to go hang with family, right? Because yeah. I'm trying to make the right decisions. These are formative years. It's important. Right. And so... Look at that. Pat coming in with like some child psychology <laughs> stuff Big here. words. Big and so words. they're back, and it's been intense. I was absolutely exhausted last week. Like, completely exhausted between doing the work thing and the family thing and all that stuff. All this stuff I didn't really... I used to just go home from work and just kind of like maybe yeah, just sit out. there. Or just sit, sit in silence. Yeah. That's the really... That's the big change for me. Because you can't do that anymore, right? Because Declan's... There's Zero silence. Declan's four, and she's not just going to be like, "Oh, Dad, you want to just like take thirty minutes to yourself just to sit just on the try couch to unwind, no. Dad? Stare out the window, get you a glass of wine." No, it's <laughs> I missed you, Daddy. Hug, 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 which I love, but I need alone time. I'm built to have alone. I need to just be in solitude, no people, no things, just me and my thoughts, and that's it. I, I feel need like that. The, I she build a fort, right? Just hide in it. Yeah. yeah. I feel like the I missed you, Daddy. Is just the psychological manipulation of a four year old girl, yeah, no, right? Because evil. it's like she's she knows saying how to speak, exactly. Right? She's saying she's I saying. misted you, just because she's coming in with like oh, I'm gonna drive him crazy in about two seconds, and and that I misted you. That attitude is gonna that's gonna carry on where she, you know years on the road she'd be like, oh dad, you're the best. I love you. Hey, can I get twenty bucks? <laughs> and the answer is gonna be no. Get a job. <laughs> yeah, right. It's not gonna Good be. Move. She missed you. De- she missed she you. She missed you. Yeah, and it's just been weird too because Declan is different now. So she's been away from me th- basically for two months. I'm kind of an equalizer in the house. When I say right. something's getting done, it's getting done. No, you and, are. You re- like you are the disciplinarian for sure. And I don't know if that's in practice or just in like just the way you address things. I remember we were in the studio, we were in the station office, and it's always funny to see which which parent a child responds to in terms of like what they say. And she was jumping around on the couch and Nikki was like, Declan, Declan, you can't do that. Like your dad's your dad said no. And then you went like Declan and she was like, Sorry, Dad. <laughs> just, you didn't even say like don't do it. You just she already knew she was in trouble. So <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Dad. She has a, an overwhelming fear of disappointing me. And so when oh, I Oh, he milked that out for I will, years. For as long as I can. <laughs> yeah. And so when I my presence is a calming factor her for her for the most part. Like just yesterday, she went <laughs> She growled and hissed to her mother, and I just looked at her, and she was like, Ooh, "Sorry, Daddy," <laughs> and I was like, "Say sorry to your mother." You shot her a glare. Yeah, and, and it's like, and she is a crazy person after being with the in-laws. Is it because they're kind of like it's Lord of the Flies? And yeah, not, man. Not just kind of letting her run buck wild. She did that yeah. for two months, and she's going to pretend like she forgot. Goes about to rules. bed at ten p.m., eleven well, p.m. Well, the grandparents, it's easy for them to let the rules be broken because then they don't have to enforce them in the long run, anyways. Right. Well, and they're it's also, not their responsibility. Also, grandparents are kind of like have this. We've been there, done that. Yeah, we don't kind of. And they're like, and in this case, I used to run a daycare. (laughs) Oh, look, we raised you perfect. No, you didn't. (laughs) I'm riddled with problems. I'm a, I'm a basket case. That's a different topic for a whole other day. Where like parents go, well, when you were a kid, yeah, because you didn't know, you didn't have the same information we have Mm -hmm. now. Car seats are important, mom. Thanks for filling me full of. Pizza pockets. You didn't get cancer. You didn't get parent shamed every time you tried to yeah. do something on social media. Yeah, so I mean, so it's just been difficult. They also have a kid in the house that's six and not that well put together. Like well trained? Uh, He's yeah. a real mess, huh? Like, he is. You just want to say, but that's like, what is your relative? So you can't really just crush him right now, can you? Right, no, I can't. <laughs> no, he's just a wild kid. Yeah. No, he's just, he's just uh, in the house. It's like an infestation. He's six. Came so through he's the just, dog door. He's just crazy, and he's not used to having another kid. Who gets attention in the house either, and so right, it's right. like just that whole so game. It's kind of like I, I find like the kids, ones. kids respond one of two ways when that happens: either they fold up 
and they shrivel and they kind of like limp off like a wounded animal knowing that they've just been out kitted in the house or they take it up a notch to a, like an obnoxious level where they're trying to compete either way it's a real pain in the ass yeah all right what's coming up next all right next get, get away from my family no i have enough to I think about i kind of feel like we could just keep handing you let's shovels let's talk about them more what <laughs> about <laughs> your in-laws let's go into that more Brad, rip on that six-year-old just a little bit more make you feel better all right, all right coming up next we're going to talk about what pat uh has got coming up in terms of the la marathon walking training Woo-woo. and uh he hits round Woo-woo. 10 of chemo tomorrow find nearly informed on instagram and twitter at nearly informed all right what's up my name is brad brian is here it is nearly informed everybody we have patrick moot hanging out today we're going to talk about um his chemotherapy updates Mm -hmm. because he told me today he was like i don't really want i'm kind of in a bummer mood i don't really want to talk about it and i was like that's a perfect time to talk about chemotherapy um, and How would you know when a perfect time to talk about chemo? Well, I'm talking about in radio in general. Radio in general, it's, GC, look at him. <laughs> radio in general, it's important to talk about the things you don't want to talk about, like uh, like Brad's crazy relatives <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, Pat's chemotherapy. But first, guys, first I came across this study real quick. Let's lighten it up real quick. Okay. Um, okay. I, there's a lot of misconceptions on the dirtiest places in the airport. Do you have any guesses? There's four places that are dirtiest, dirtiest in the airport. Some of them are easier to guess than others. One of them, one of them really shocked me. Uh, I need some context inside the airport. We're not including planes. Uh, plane. Anytime you once you get into the airport, all the way through your flight process. So planes are on here too. Parts of the plane. Jump seat in the cockpit. Wow, the jump seat. Well, they have seats. Seats in general. Your seat on the plane. Because no one washes those seats, I, man. I, the, you know what always grosses me out is touching the touchscreen stuff, like right on front, oh, right yeah. in front uh, of you, because yeah. people are breathing on it and sneezing on it and coughing Picking on their it. noses and stuff. To wiping their dirty fingers on it. Well, thanks to Alaska, who gutted my favorite airline, Virgin Airlines, screens on the back of seats are going away anyway. Why? Because they think, bring your own device and we'll just give oh, you Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah, they want to let you just stream it on your phone. That's fine. Uh, nah, Give man. me free Wi-Fi if it works. Listen, I, here's why I hate that. There's a lot of American Airlines does that. They're like, hey, you don't know, worry, you don't have TVs, but you can stream it on your phone. But the, the problem is, is that then I can't watch a mindless movie and also live tweet. That's <laughs> true. The, the one thing <laughs> that's it's so rough, stupid. It's a very selfish issue. Though, um, I yeah, I do. So, they're like plane movies for me, like movies I would never watch unless exactly. I was on a plane. Yeah. So you don't like you I don't... wouldn't if I had access to everything. I definitely am not watching Deep Water Horizon. Right. That's a plane. I mean, movie. I watched it just the other night. But... Did you? No, I'm kidding. No, um, it's kind of a Brad. Here's, movie. Another, here's another one that was that Michael Bay. Yes. <laughs> here's another Peter one Berg, that same thing that people pretty. This one's pretty much a no brainer. The tray table. Those don't get oh, washed yeah. very much. That one didn't blow me away. I like um, to put my boogers on top of the tray table because mm-hmm. it folds closed. It's like a surprise. Yeah, it's like ta da, gross. Yeah, I don't like the um, word TSA bins. TSA bins also. Or oh, I didn't really think about that, but if you think bins, about all the people shoes, taking their dirty shoes, never off. washed either. But here's one that I didn't, I didn't anticipate on, and I, I find it interesting. The dirtiest place when they did like bacterial collections at an airport, the water fountain buttons. I've never n- get clean. Who's drinking out of the water fountain? I've never used a water oh, fountain. I'll pay nine dollars for a bottle guys, of water before I put my mouth next to that thing. You guys need to fly it with a hangover more often because you <laughs> will use that. I think that's the only fountain. way that I think you I should fly. fly with hangovers less. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm not saying that that's not. Okay. Yeah, you're drinking <laughs> out of water thing. fountains like a heathen. Yeah, what am I doing? Well, once you're I get my disgusting freak as soon as I get upgraded by Delta, I don't mess with the. I, all I mess with is vodka and cranberries the whole time. Anyway, uh, anyways, all right. So next time you go, um, bring a. You'll, like a hand sanitary wipe. But that list is why, while going through chemo, I've refused to travel. Yeah? Yeah, because the you just named off like everything that you have to touch in an airport. I didn't even think people used water fountains in airports, and now I'm finding out that it has the most bacteria on it. Uh, people do use them all. I mean, you, think about it. You're just walking into the bathroom, quick little, you don't need a whole bottle of water, you need Gatorade or vitamin water, you just... Quick little splash of water. My thing is, like, I'm always afraid of... I don't think I've used a water fountain anywhere in so long because I'm so afraid of my lips accidentally touching the spigot. That is a very uncomfortable uh, situation when you're, you get Not a little happening. too close. Like, your top lip hits the... Hits like a... Somebody bumped me once and I hit my tooth on it. And I was like, I'm done here. That's mm-hmm. why... I- <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with everything No today. more water fountains for this I'm fella. I'm going home. I'm drinking my water out of bottles like a normal person. It's the same reason, and this comes from a Kevin Hart skit, but ever since I saw it, I was like, I can never, oh, uh, cute. I can't do it. cute. You called it a skit. 
Uh, it's a little skit. It's skit a bit. Uh, when you get up there and do your little skit. Get a little skit up there, buddy. I, I have a hard time giving cigarettes to homeless people because I'm afraid they're going to touch your fingers. Touch my lip. Or touch my fingers. Uh, I don't totally. know if they're gonna reach out and touch my. my Why lip. would they touch your? Lip? I don't know, but I'm, if you you're almost like you're gonna, what, like you can just hand you? a cigarette to somebody. Yeah, no, that's what I do. But then I immediately fear that they're gonna be a crazy one, and they just. Boop. I did. Why would they do that? I actually had. I don't know. I had an occurrence with a homeless guy the other day, and I felt really bad. I was trying to hand him a dollar, and he reached out, and his hands were so gross, and so I kind of just got it close and dropped it, <laughs> and it hit the ground. And I threw it at him. <laughs> and you go, I'm sorry. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. Whoopsie. That's for you. I'm not picking that up off the ground. You can. Your hands Whoa, are way dirtier so than the ground. Gross. Well, Pat uh, jumped into chemo already. So this is what Pat told me earlier today. He's got round ten to, um, tomorrow, and so that would be he has three left. And you said you're already not in a good mood because you're already not looking forward to I mean, it. But you have three just, rounds left, though. Like, all day today, I've felt sick. I've felt really nauseous all day. What was that? <laughs> Don't worry. Little just, feedback just from keep somebody's going. headphones? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've just felt really nauseous all day. And it's just, it's the anxiety of, I should have taken one of my anxiety pills. Um, but it's just the anxiety of it, thinking about it. Like, I am... Even yesterday, like I and today, I went to the gym today and kind of worked out a little bit. Like I have to power through not getting bummed out because it just sucks. I don't want to sit around all week and feel like crap again. Yeah. So it's now like it's just ten kind of, times. It's you know, chemotherapy. I don't know if it ever does this, but it's clearly worn its welcome with yeah. you in terms of. It. But I'm aren't you getting like looking it. forward to the whole like being done with it? It's just one round closer to like the last round. It just doesn't. It's weird, but I just am not excited about. it. The end right now. I think a lot of people underestimate how chemo works, right? They think they go through the first one and they go, hey, you know what? It's bad, but it's not as bad as maybe I thought it could have been. Mm-hmm. But chemo isn't one of those things that gets better. No. It gets worse. Yeah. And so now you're on round 10 and you, you just, I mean, I, I get it. It's going to be that much worse this time. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's why when you said if you wanted to talk about it today, when we were talking about it, I was like, because even literally right now, I feel really nauseous. But why it's, this should this is like kind of supposed to be therapeutic you're supposed to it's talk just it out talking about it just makes it it's well, in my head about the worst now i'm just about thinking it? about it but i'm just it just it's just it's like looking at some it's like looking at food that grosses you out like you just right. i just can't it's just an involuntary response to chemo i don't know how i would react to the chemo situation but i just know my personality and i would be in one of two places either i would be in and tell me if you've been in either one of these places completely so dark about it that I, I did, wouldn't end up showing up to chemo because I'm just like, screw it, just let it kill me. Um, or the other that side is of dark, it... It's really dark. The other side of it would be, I would be so nonchalant about it and so ha-ha, this is funny, look at me, look at what I... <laughs> this sure. Is, this is One my, side ha, of the ha, defense ha. mechanism spectrum or the other. Yeah, but there would be no middle ground. And you I, know, I kind of like, pri- like, I'm really proud of you for... Uh, f- so far what you've done in the space of, of just sharing your experience with people. Um, I know you get depressed about it, but I'm really proud of kind of the, you've hit that middle ground, which I don't think I could do. It's, it's, it sucks. And honestly, like people are always, you know, kind of like in, I don't want to say in awe cause that makes me sound too awesome. Um, but they're always like impressed at how positive I've stayed. And like you're saying, like yeah. go to the dark place where you mm-hmm. wouldn't want to show up. My imagination is crazy. So you're talking about walking by a homeless person and thinking they touch you on the lips or something. I walk by a homeless person, I'm like, what if they jump up and kissed me? And then I'm thinking about like all the weird lip diseases I would get, and all of a sudden I'm way down a 20 minute tangent of like my imagination just picking on me. Have you written? Have you written any in that imagination rabbit hole train down the down the tunnel? Did you write any tweets or post anything about it? No. Okay. No, I haven't. I'm just wondering if you also figured out like what would I tweet if if a bum kissed me right now? Right. If a, no, I haven't. I haven't. That's more Brian. Yeah, to yeah, be that's... fair, guys, what you guys are assuming that the homeless guy is going to kiss you or touch your mouth or something? What if the homeless person is terrified of you doing that? I mean, that's fine. I get it. <laughs> I would be like, we're on the same page. <laughs> like, that guy looks weird. You Depending know what's... on which mood I'm in, he should be concerned. <laughs> but it's, but... I might kiss this man. <laughs> Hello, you good-looking homeless man. It looks like it's been man. a while since he's had Ooh. some affection. Hair and I'm going yes. weird today. I'd like to wriggle my tongue through your two teeth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, now I'm nauseous. Really yeah, nauseous. Yeah, but you did that to yourself. <laughs> I, know. But, I know. But here's the thing. My question was, Don't is there? there's no way that you can like kind of like break it down to the positive aspect of once this round is done, then, then you only have one more round till the last round. It's... 
it's weird. So I, what I was going to say is that my imagination hasn't really let me go dark. Like the idea of going dark, it's like my imagination won't even touch it. Like won't even touch it. And that's just the way that it's responded to it. Like cancer is off limits to my imagination. It is good. And it's very fascinating because when I first got the diagnosis, I was like, oh, my imagination is going to torture me with this one. But even with, with the being excited about the end of chemo, it's kind of the same thing. I just can't be excited about it. Like, I don't know what it is, but there's something inside of me that's just saying not yet. Like, not yet. Like, like, you can't even make jokes about it? You can't even, I just, like... I look at the end, and I don't see a party. I see a new kind of, like, a new world of things that I need no, to start I see a party. I'll doing. tell you that much right now. I want Whether a Whether you like it or not, <laughs> I see a party. party. Brian's already planning it. Um, well, and I... I know, and I will be happy to be done to not have... When I'm done with the last one, there will be a wave of... Of like you know, but just because it's over doesn't mean that I'm all good yet. You it doesn't know what mean, I mean that it's over. It's not over yeah. yet. This is like a lifestyle changes and like you know. When does like, this ever get over? I don't think ever. <laughs> I think I have to be worried about getting cancer again forever. But yeah. I think that's also a healthy thing because it you know in general being worried about getting cancer means you're taking care of yourself and that you're you know being in charge of your health and because I realize yeah, this really should have happened to me. Yeah, I mean if there's no sh- someone in here who's not super healthy, it'd be you. Yeah. yeah, like like I was in the best shape he, of my life. He's in the best shape of his life. Mm-hmm. He creatively is doing amazing, and then this happens to him. He doesn't. He but, doesn't need this. Hold on, time out. That's also I need this step for a life change. <laughs> yeah, you needed the positive. Well, life. I was already. Pat didn't really have to cancel anything. He was pretty uh, wide I open. He's like, I got cancer. <laughs> uh, oh my god, when are you going to find months the of chemo? Huh? They're like, so if you need to move some things around, I was like, no, I'm good. Actually, I don't move anything. I don't even. Good. <laughs> it is funny though because every time I talk about, hey, are you available for a call on Tuesday? He's like, I gotta check my schedule. I know. I <laughs> I say that all the time now just because now my like before this I didn't like to go and do stuff. Now it's just like, oh, I have an out of everything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna play that card. I just real cancel hard. like I I'd love to come to your wedding in a couple years, but I might have another flare up. Yeah. <laughs> just to be safe. This isn't done yet. I'm gonna find a way to play the cancer survivor card after this. <laughs> it's all Perfect. different card. All right, coming up next, we're gonna touch really quick on Pat's marathon walk. And also I wanna find out when you guys got the top. Talk as a child in terms of sex. This is Nearly Informed with Brad and Brian. You are listening to Nearly Informed. What's up? My name is Brad. Brian is here. Hey, guys. When did you get the talk as a child? We have Patrick Mood in studio with us as well today. Uh, Think about it. When did you get the talk? How did that talk go? Uh, What did you take from it? How did it influence your life, either positive or negative? Uh, but first, before because we didn't get it in last segment, um, Patrick is walking the LA Marathon. Pat, what is your training update? I want to get a training update as if this were like your training for the Olympics. Mm-hmm. Bum, 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 what are we up to in terms of distance? I walked five and a half miles today. Again, wow, it was ninety minutes. That's good. Yeah, yeah ninety that's minutes of walking. Well, that's Thank all. You. Listen, all, uh, walking is all about training muscles and your feet and ligaments and things that aren't used to that much repetition and um, standing. Honestly, I'm thinking the part of my body that's going to be the that needs the most training is my feet. Like yeah. that's where I even more so than like like I'd run for an hour and my feet wouldn't really hurt, but walk for an hour and for some reason they do. Are you planning on walking the marathon? Yeah. Oh yeah, we're walking the whole yeah, thing. Walking man. the whole thing. Leaving at 4:30 in the morning. Do we have an update on how we front we're fundraising on that yet? We have no no Has no one? E- I put it out last week. I thought someone would email you. I've been thinking about the per mile. The the, the, the tough thing with the per mile donations is that we got to go back and do some math after that. Maybe a lot of it. Uh, no, and just, then and no, then hustle just, people for no, their donations. No, you just post how what how many miles you walked, and then it's on the honor system. If people pledge ten bucks a mile, then that's two sixty. If they play, you know, a hundred bucks a mile, you do the math. Twenty six hundred. In my head, I'm like all negative. I'm like. Bet how many miles you think I'll complete. That's kind of, yeah, there you go. <laughs> kind of pretty much is Over, that. under. Um, all right, so we're going to figure this out. We're going to get on GoFundMe or something. But there's, I looked up a couple options there's gotta for be a, a fundraising, walk-a-thon like kind of open open calculator. format fundraising thing like that. All right, so keep get on that, okay? Get and on that so when, we can, stuff when, to it, do. when we are on that, we'll tell you here on the show. March 24th is the, is the marathon we're walking. We are going to start, we have to start mathematically at 4.30 in the morning. To make sure we cross the finish line and get medals. Mm-hmm. I'm not walking crap, but I will be there with a cup of coffee at the end. That's, That's fine. I might, you know, I might bring mimosas, to be honest. I mean, if, walk. if you bring mimosas, I'll walk. We're Let's do it! Um, Just have every, I'm such a booze hand. every three miles. We need somebody with mimosas. <laughs> Refills. All right, guys, when did you get the talk? 
when did you get to talk from your parents about sex and about the, those sex things, sex-oriented things? Brad, when did you get to talk? Or I was did you? 15 years old, small condo, southern Arizona. Small table. It's a little two bedroom that we converted into a three bedroom. This is pretty. Uh, you really had like this paint in the picture. Just, yeah, no, on the tip of your tongue. My mom's standing. It's in like the you've kitchen. been waiting your life for someone to ask you this question. My mom's standing in the kitchen, finishes up the dishes, turns around, she's like, "Brad, I, you know, I think we need to have this talk." And my stepdad goes, "Yeah, it's probably time to have the talk about sex." And uh, I looked at them both and said, "I lost my virginity at 12. And wow! I, and I walked out. So mic right. drop. So you know what they? You know what's funny though? His parents are probably like, "Well, hey, look, can he handle it on his yeah. own? <laughs> he handled it. We didn't. We don't like. Yeah, because when you lose your virginity at twelve, it's super healthy and doesn't involve any now daddy issues you move whatsoever. Right on with that. <laughs> um, mine was my dad was so awkward with it. My dad was just like he tried to give me some half ass talk on my way to prom. My senior year was like, <laughs> you know, I'm supposed to have a talk with you. My like, dad, it's fine. It's like it's way late. Yeah, buddy, we're good. And he goes, really? Okay, I'm just saying. You know, I just wanted to do my job here as a dad. <laughs> like, gave me, like, a pat on the back. Gar, like, gar, this is gar. so weird. I, nowadays, Pat, when did, did Dad give you a talk? I don't I feel even like if, think... Uh, I it, think he did the same thing. Like, he gave it a shot when I was, like, had already been banging for, like, two years. Yeah. And it was well, it you, was completely lost. Mom gave me the talk once because... And it was earlier. It was because we were in the ferry line. I remember this very well, too. Catching a ferry we boat were, from we were in the ferry uh, boat. to Woodby Island. We were going to Seattle for something. And earlier that day, I had been in the shower, and I had masturbated with shampoo. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone's ever done that. Oh, that'll burn, man. But that'll burn the old pee hole. Why is that burn so bad? I don't know. I guess it's like getting shampoo Uh, in your eyes, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just... You guys need to try Johnson & Johnson's. Yeah, no tears, baby. No tears? No tears. No tears. You Um, can rub it out. It's changed my life since I had a kid. You can rub it out with no tears shampoo? Yeah, it's fantastic. I just am not dying to jerk off with shampoo. Life hack. Yeah, but Brad's saying... Life hack. When you're in the shower and you're you're married, you have have kids. I have the no tear shampoo. That's a tweetable life hack. Hey, guys, did you know this? (laughs) You can jerk off with Johnson & Johnson's, fellas. Get to work. (laughs) You know what's funny? I think every guy... In the, I'm, I'm, I made feel that comfortable mistake. saying is made that shampoo oh, mistake. Yeah, for sure. Well, so here's what happened. Then I try and go pee like 20 minutes later, and it burns like the old Dickens. <laughs> and so I like am like, okay, that's weird. I think I broke my penis. So then I try and pee again a little bit later, and it burns again. And so then I get in the car with my mom, and I think I got like a hand job or maybe a blow job like earlier like a couple months before or something like that. So I'm thinking, like, maybe I got some weird STD. <laughs> oh, no. You know what I mean? So the imagination starts wandering. So I asked my mom, so what's you're up? Boy. Your crazy imagination started very young. Yeah, yeah. it started down, way down young. I thought I got, like, some yeah. sort of hand AIDS or something. So I didn't know what was going on. So I basically brought it up to her, like, you know, it's like pee. It like burns when I pee, and she was like, "Have you had sex?" And I was like, "No, no, but Jeez, I mom, have, but, but I have done all these other things. Just like spilled the oh, beans. No. I know, like an idiot. But did, did she? Didn't and know she about was this. like, "What else?" And I was like, "Well, I did like masturbate with shampoo. I mean, I told her everything. Oh my god! I know." And she was like, "That's probably it." And I was like, okay. "Dude, you're. I would have taken that. I would have taken me and my burning penis to my grave. I would have been like, I think I got hand aids. Sorry. Well, it's been a good run, everybody. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Can't tell nope. anyone this secret. Clearly, uh, fortunately, my imagination did not." allow it. I, I was dying of some sort of penile dysfunction. I once thought I had uh, like chlamydia or something when I was in college, and, but it was a, just a urinary tract infection. Yeah. Uh, but I told, I went to the clinic because I thought, and they were like, "Well, have you been sexually active?" And I was like, "Yeah." I was like, you know, sophomore in college, like, "Do we?" Yeah. What am I? I'm nerd? starting the basketball team. I'm banging up a stork, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> and she goes, "Well, did she goes?" Were you, did you wear protection? I was like, yeah. She goes, well, Brian, I don't think it's it's probably not an STD if you like you you've never had unprotected sex. I was like, no, I never have. And she goes, it's probably a UTI. And I was like, what the hell is that? And then she's Wait, like, urinary technical institute, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> UTI. No, I go to Laverne. I go to ULV, not UTI. <laughs> so, and I was like, oh man, look at that. And I was just, I was so thankful because on my way to this uh, clinic. I was going through this scenario in my head where I then had to tell my girlfriend at the time that she gave me chlamydia. And that would have been a really awkward conversation, especially because she didn't have chlamydia. And I didn't either. 
but I thought I did. Mm, I'll that's never, rough. Two things this reminds me of. One, when I got a phone call from an ex-girlfriend. I was a senior in high school. She was off, in, I think, freshman or sophomore year sophomore year in college and she calls me and she's like hey just found out i have herpes and i was like hmm cool hmm. Uh, what does that mean for me yeah <laughs> she had cheated on me a bunch in high school and so i was like oh, i might have wow that's a thing that that, that that you keep it forever sometimes it's there sometimes it's not so i went and got tested but i didn't have it and then um the other thing that remind the whole masturbation conversation reminds me of is when i was like 10 my brother goes hey have you uh you masturbated yeah and he's like much older than me like really like ancient he's like 40 and um <laughs> and he goes gross old man yeah he goes have you masturbated yet and i was like <laughs> he's at the dinner table everyone's there i was like no he's like well just, just don't be alarmed when you do when it comes out it's like it's green <laughs> and I was like, no, it's not. It's like creamy white. Oh, he's like, gotcha. Busted. <laughs> See, busted. I God, what dinner conversation. Oh, that's a weird one. Remind hey. me never to go to a dinner at the Nolan household. <laughs> Family's back. You know, a blast. Green my jizz. mom and my brother, who are only 16 years See, apart. Nobody <laughs> told me that. Like, I believed all my friends. when Because there is a time when you're like a young teenager, you know, 12, 10, 11, 12, 13, where like everyone's like, masturbating's gross, man, masturbator, you know, like all this. And then at, some point, in time, at some point in time, that becomes like, ah, oh, no, that's cool, man, everyone does it, right? Well, what happened was is everyone made that decision on their own, but like I didn't go to the group meeting where we all decided like masturbating went from like, gross and faux pas to, to normal. Dope. So I was the only one out of all my buddies who at like 17 like one of them was like yeah man I, I, I of course I do that. I just did it between third period. Yeah he's like dude I do that all the time. And I was <laughs> like it down my leg just a minute yeah. ago. I was like shut up guys. I'm shut doing up. it right now. I was like shut up you guys are lying man. Get out of here. They're like no man we do. I'm like yeah, you're not going to fool me. Alright you're not going to trick me with it. What comes joke. out is green. Alright no way. You're not going to bust me on that one. And then they're like, no, we do. And I'm like, are you, you swear to God, all you guys? And then I felt tricked. I was like, you know what? Not only, well, I, I don't need to. I'm never going to. You know what? I'm going to get <laughs> girls to do it for me all the time. Anytime. I'm just going to get a girl to do it. But mind you, at this point in time, I never had a girl do it or me do it. So well, I went into that whole situation pretty confident. Really sounds like a Me Too moment in the making. So I'm glad I abandoned that strategy. Yeah, well, meanwhile, I was in the shower jerking it with shampoo. <laughs> like a grown-up. <laughs> Head, shoulders, and junk. This is Nearly Informed. If you if you like this show, find it on the Radio.com app and subscribe. And now, a thought from Geico Motorcycle. It took 15 minutes to take a spirit animal quiz online. Please be the cheetah. Please be the cheetah. And learn your animal isn't the cheetah, but the far less appealing blobfish. Oh, come on. To add insult to injury... You could have used those 15 blobfish minutes to switch your motorcycle insurance to GEICO. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance.